Hey guys, my name's Josh, and I had a friend who asked me to do a Reason tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm using Reason 9.5, but basically most everything that works here will work in other versions. So, let's get acquainted here. You just open up a song, and I'm going to try to show you some hotkeys. You start up with a document. It says document 1. First thing I want to do is hit save as. And the hotkey for that is Control Shift C. So I'm just going to call this Test Song. So Control Shift C is Save As. Control C is to save. And you want to do that quite often because bad things can happen. Computers aren't perfect, reason isn't perfect. Sometimes you're going to get a crash, and Reason doesn't have an autosave function as far as I know. You are the autosave function. So you start out with this rack here, and you're going to want to make an instrument, right? So you right click on the rack. Here, let me show you this first F5, F6, F7. F5, F6, F7. It might be different with older versions, I don't know, but here's the, here it is. Some of these have hotkeys. View main mixer, F5, view racks, F7, view sequencer, F6. So the rack is F6, and this is where we're going to start building our instrument. What I like to do first is make a combinator, which is under utilities, and then you have this. If you want, you can look at the back and look at all the routing. And then you just choose an instrument. I'll make a Thor. And then Tab will have us look at the back. What you want to do is make sure that the outputs from these go to the inputs. Or whatever that says. From devices, it'll say on there for me. And then... I'm not 100% sure if you're going to be using a newer version that uses mixed channels, but I'm going to be using mixed channels. So we'll do this. I like to make mixed channels for every single instrument and then create a parallel channel for it. And then if you hit Control G, it'll make a bus channel for that. So I'm going to write Thor here, and then I like to label things so I don't get too lost because my songs get really big. B Thor, bus Thor, Thor bus, and then if you look over here, a note lane appeared on this, and I hit F7 to jump to this screen. Now, now that we're here, I'm going to hit play. If you want to get rid of the click, you just press C, and the hotkey for play and pause is space. And that's when I hit C, that goes away. So, the next thing I want to do is, well, I want to make some notes, right? So let's make some notes. Double click the lane, and then here's our MIDI sequencer. So there's a couple things that you can do to make your time here easier. If you hold shift and do the scroll wheel, it'll go back and forth. If you're not holding shift, it'll go up and down. If you hold control shift, it'll zoom in and out. So I'm just going to come up with some chords. That's kind of loud for our purposes here. I want to be able to hear myself talk. So we got that. So what I did is I just made a chord there. Well, more accurately an, arpe an arpeggio. But what I did was I clicked this. I held control. I moved it. Unclicked. And all that does is I'm pretty much drag and dropping it. So that I don't have to do stuff. So the next thing, and this is universal for most of uh, most of your 
time in the sequencer you have Q W E R T Y and you can just click through these and not even know what what they do as long as you can see it the cursor is a click and and drag the pencil tool draws notes the eraser tool which I don't use too often erases notes now I erase those I'm gonna hit control to Z control Z to undo that the next one is the razor tool so you can do this you can cut notes in half and you can also cut note lanes in half and then you like you can draw with the pencil tool and stuff like that and then every once in a while you might want to mute a clip and that's T and then you have this zoom zoom thing but like like I said you can just use control shift to zoom in and out so we don't have to worry about that too much so hit T to turn that off and then this grab tool just lets you move around like this I don't find it very useful if you want to move around you use this lane here at the bottom you can zoom all the way out so the next thing that you want to do is I'll show you well you don't have to do it but here I'm gonna hit play I don't like that I'm very particular I, I tend to use a lot of the same chords and it kind of bugs me that I do but whatever so you have this here a bracket that says L and another one that says R and if you turn on loop mode by hitting L or clicking this button here it'll turn the loop on and off so if, if loop is on it'll once once this once you're this guy I don't know what you want to call it it shows where you're at playing in the song right now if you play the song and then this hits hits the right bracket it'll jump to the left bracket so now it'll infinitely play this so next thing I want to do is just get some length here um, I think I just did something if you hold uh, alt while you're in this area and click that that it'll put your bracket your right bracket wherever you want it and if you hit control it'll put your left bracket wherever you want it so I'm gonna I'm going to grab all these with my cursor tool and then I'm gonna copy it control C then paste control V so now we have this And then we can copy that and then I'm going to grab these I'm going to hit control J and they'll combine these two clips together so now we have this but if we want to make that more interesting let's make a different chord but I don't want to listen to it endlessly so I'm actually gonna do this here I'm gonna grab these two I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna grab it here drop it here is that the right note I don't even know if that's in the right key. Who knows? Yeah, whatever. So we got that. Oh, this is going to bother me. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's passable. And then another one.
so that's what we've got there um if we want to make things more interesting this is why i like to make my parallel channels and everything and another thing to note is let's go to the options menu for a minute you go to edit preferences uh you'll have all these things so general mouse knob automation cleanup level i don't bother with these too much reduce cable clutter settings um usually i have it shown for all of them but there might be there might be some stuff going on like if your computer isn't fast enough or not like strong enough you might want to hide your cables and then turn off cable animation and another one is your cpu usage limit you want to turn that all the way up unless it's going to start calling you causing you problems I prefer the darker themes. The blinding white of the normal theme is weird, but I think they add that to 9.5 or something like that. Uh, new devices get browser focus. Here's what you want to click off. Load default song in new devices. It'll be something along those lines. Turn it off. Um, use Because it's going to automatically load up something for you. And if you want it gone, you're going to have to hit reset device or the older versions. It says reinitialize device. You want to use multi-core audio rendering, use cyber threading. Audio, you want to make sure that you're using <coughs> an interface that you can actually hear it through. Um, if you have um, a specific audio interface, you want to make sure that it's using this one. <coughs> I have some issues with Reason where I can only record... Um, I can only record audio through my into reason through my microphone by using my Focusrite interface. But now I have a DAC. This guy to power my headphones. Um, sample rate you can. I think you'll be all right with this, and then this this slider. Pretty much is a sample rate or buffer or whatever, I don't know. The higher the higher you go, the more taxing on your CPU it's gonna be. And then these are like you'll have to navigate this menu to add MIDI controllers and stuff like that. And then you have all this other stuff that I don't really bother with. So let's fiddle with this Thor for a minute. Frequency, I'll, sh I'll try to show you everything that each of, each of these knobs does. First, I'm going to fiddle with the frequency knob. What's that? When I'm fiddling with that knob, is what it's doing is it's a low-pass filter. And then these have different results, and I'm not too privy on that information, but pretty much... Where this knob is at is going to be where it cuts off the high frequencies. And then you can jump between these. Like you have the state variable filter. A bandpass is like it cuts a little cone out. So it's a high and a low pass and it's very specific. I think that's what it says. It's very small. I'm on a 4K monitor. You have the high pass filter, which means anything above that threshold will be let through. Then a notch is a weird low pass, I think. Anyway, comb filter. I have no idea how to explain that. It sounds it sounds cool though. Format fil format filter is for like making your stuff go oh yo 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 yo. I guess you could probably use it for a wobble bass if you wanted to. Well, let's not get too into that. So, if I play this right now, no sound's coming out. But if I click this, meaning oscillator one, this first one is getting routed to wherever this thing is going, which is routed to all this. And like, if you look at it, you can kind of figure it out. But, oh, I see. Um, There's two sets of filters that you, Thor can use. So I can have this going, like one oscillator going to two different filters, and then you can route it this way or that way. 
anyway and then you have your basic saw wave square wave triangle wave and sine wave pretty much as you go down the less gritty it'll get the top one is the grittiest the lowest one is the least gritty so a sub a sine wave is where you're going to be making your subs at your sub frequencies at so down here we have an amp envelope so if I turn this all the way down you're not really gonna hear anything I think yeah so the attack will is the rise the decay is from where it decays from the highest point of the attack And then the sustain is where it levels out at. If you kind of listen, the attack rises, the decay falls, the, the sustain is going to be the most level if you were to just use the one. And release is not going to make any sound at all unless you have a sustain. Well, if you have, unless you have to have, you have, you have to have something to release in order for that to do anything. But pretty much release is how long that it lingers. So I want to make a sound. I'm going to show you how to make it. I'm going to turn the frequency all the way down. So this amp envelope. You can hardly hear it, but what I'm doing is I'm going to turn this envelope filter. There's a secondary filter. I'm not sure what gate trigger does, but let's turn it on to be safe. I'm, I have a marginal idea on it. I'm going to make this into a pluck. So all I'm going to do is make sure that the sound is all the way up on the amp, and then our modifier, I guess you could say the envelope, is just gonna give us a give us a little bit of decay. I'm gonna move that filter around to taste. And then if we want to get more complicated, we can detune this. We can make a second filter and detune it a little bit. Or a, a second oscillator and then detune it and if you want to get really funky you can add a noise oscillator and I'm gonna send it through a second filter here Actually, that's not a good idea so I'm gonna actually send these all through and see what happens oh right okay I'm trying to do workarounds for things I don't have to do this mixer will control the lo the volume levels between all the oscillators so you have one and two if you do go it all this way it's only gonna you're only gonna hear one oscillator one all the way to the right oscillator two and then this one, oscillator three, is controlled separately. And then you can also bring up one and two together. But I don't particularly like that. Um, if you want to get real complicated, you can um, put up a state variable filter as your final oscillator or your final filter and then put it around like 80 hertz so there's no sub frequencies but hey that might just annoy you um and then another thing is you can i like to do the mixing on the f on the bus tracks 
click click whatever you want to do and then hit F2. And we can also put a high pass filter here. And it's nice to have that in this version of Reason because you have a visual representation of the things. So the next thing I want to show you how to do is a is how to do ducking and you'll you you might have heard this effect before and not known what it was but I think it's amazing sounding thing so what we're gonna do is get an audio merger splitter and then I'm gonna go under utilities grab a mixer and then I'm going to grab a reverb and I'm going to grab my reverb might be blue yours might be a different color or my ver reverb's blue yours might be a different color because it does convolution reverb now too meaning it does reverb based off of a specific sound sample so what am I looking for here I like to use a certain I like to use the Red Rock Sound Vintage Compressor, but since you might not have that, I'm going to go ahead and try to use as many things that are available to you. So what you do is we're going to take the output from this, here let me, for those of you who don't have access to this stuff, the mix channels and stuff. Pretty much, you can get rid of this here, and then, I, I don't know a good way of explaining it, you can do this without it. It just gets, it just gets, um, messy. So what I'm going to do here is, think, why are people calling me when I'm trying to do things? Now I'm going to feel bad I'm, because I'm probably missing out. So what was I doing? Anyway, pretty much if you got rid of these shells of the mixers and then replaced them with, with merger splitters, then you'll be getting the same effect um, because that's essentially what this is doing. The combinator is getting sent to this mixer, which is which is also getting sent to here completely dry signals and then they're getting mushed back together in this bus channel so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this mix channel we're gonna take two devices send it to the spider which is gonna get sent to our mixer so that's one and then we're gonna get a reverb signal we're gonna grab this we're gonna send it through the compressor and we're going to send it to this and then we're going to make sure our mixer is going back so that we have a complete um what you call it we have uh ever, we're we're not interrupting our signal chain otherwise you're not going to hear anything you're not going to hear what you're looking for so we've got that going on. I'm going to go down here and put the split these notes in half just so that we can get a better representation of this idea. Oh, and make sure that your third your third output from this merger splitter is going to the side chain in, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. grab these it's a little bit too short so we can fiddle around with the if you hit the with the Reverb, we can fiddle around, we can click that, and then change our different um, 
reverbs, but I I usually stick with room hall and arena. But if you want to go crazy, you can turn this way up, and I like to turn the dry wet knob down a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this third output from the merger splitter and put it into the side chain in of our compressor. I'm just going to exaggerate this this effect. I'm going to turn the threshold all the way down and the ratio all the way up. So what this is going to do is when this signal hits this compressor, it's going to trigger the compressor which is compressing our reverb unit. So we have a dry signal here and we have this other guy here, which you probably don't really need that. We already have it somewhere else. Anyway. So if you hear what it's doing now, it's going wow. Or ever the reverb is becoming very more like a lot more distance as it is farther off. So maybe I can show you I can make you a different little thing here just to kind of accentuate what you're hearing so that you know for sure that what I'm doing is coming across what I'm trying to show you is coming across so I'm gonna turn that down a little bit and just for fun I'm going to grab a delay unit, Reason Devices, Digital Delay Line, and I'm going to be even funkier. Let me see what I did. Put this here, send the delay to the reverb. I'm going to turn off the reverb for a second so I can hear this. Make sure the dry wet knob is all the way down. I mean, not all the way down, but it doesn't have to be all the way up because then I'll show you. If it's all the way up, it's only going to be, you'll only be able to hear the delay. So the only thing being delayed right now, or the only thing with reverb on it will be the delayed signal. So if we turn that down a little bit, maybe like halfway. I'm going to turn this the decay down on the reverb a little bit. And the feedback controls how long that it'll keep the delay will keep on triggering. And there's, there's tons of different things that you can do with this, but I'm just trying to show you a basic advanced thing that I do on almost everything because I think it sounds great. All right, so... Uh, he's playing... What? Really? Dang it. Okay, so... My next thing is, <clears throat> I want to go, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a combinator and then I'm going to put a Kong in it. And I'm not going to route this at all. I'm going to get some mixed channels. I'm going to create a parallel one for each of them. This one's going to be bass. This next one I'm going to name snare. And then you can keep on going and going and going with this. Well, let's just do the bass, the snare, and a hi-hat. And if you, if remember, just hit reset or initialize device if you are getting a bunch of stuff you don't want. I'm going to click I'm going to click this guy. You have your drum. 
your drum pad here, you hit show drum and effects. And I want the sampler, so and then whatever sampler thing. I'm gonna find some samples that I like. Actually, I'll just use the factory sound bank stuff. I go to factory sounds, Kong patches, sounds and samples, bass drums. I don't find these very impressive, to be honest. I like having unaffected sounds. So what I like to do is this is how I route my Kongs. I want my bass drums to go out from outputs three and four, and we're not getting any sound until we grab this outputs three and four and put it to this. I'm actually gonna rename it BD. Now we have sound. Now, usually it'll have this combinator thing here, and I'm not sure, let me see. Yeah, it doesn't give you cool stuff to look at, like what things you're actually triggering. So I'm going to delete the tracks for this. Make sure you just hit delete tracks. And I'm going to right click the Kong and then find create track for Kong 1. And I'm going to put in over here. I just scrolled all the way down to find these. And now we have a beat. And then I'm going to actually com combine these, give this a uh, bass drum thing, <laughs> a bus channel. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another bus channel on top of this Thor and I'm going to call it ducking. Grab that. I'm going to take a audio merger splitter. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put it here on the audio splitter, merger splitter. Make sure it goes to the bass drum. And then we have to make sure that we have a compressor here. I'm holding shift when I put things down a lot. I should have said that earlier, but I'm holding shift when I'm putting in instruments because it's going to auto route things for you if you even if you don't want it to so I'm gonna drop a compressor here and put output and then put this bass drum into the compressor for this so every time that bass drum hits it's gonna tr trigger this compressor and what's that what that's doing is it's ducking everything underneath it that's getting sent to this ducking bus track I'm just gonna make it a little bit less uh, effectual oh wow. a little bit less drastic of a change I don't like how loud that is, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And as you can see, I love naming things. So the next thing that I'm going to do is set up my snares. So I'm going to have the outputs go to my snare bus, or my snare mix channel. And then I'm going to find a snare. fine make sure that you have a and then nano thing there <clears throat> that's what it's called and then nano sampler and then I'm gonna grab these every other one wherever I want my snares at
I really don't like that snare. <laughs> I'm gonna combine these into a base, uh, bus channel, B S N, and then I can't, I can't read that. So I'm gonna change the color to something else. And you can get really organized. And these are appearing on your mix channel. If you hit F5, mix or your mixer board. F6 is your rack. F7 is your sequencer. So what I want to do is have a snare here with some reverb on it. And what I can do is I can actually grab all this stuff and then drop it in the snare parallel channel. I'm just going to get rid of some of these because they're actually not needed. I don't want the delay either. They should all be kind of set up. Because I'm going to have ducking on the snare again. I'm going to turn down the snare a little bit. Or the reverb one. And then if you want, you can, people like to get rid of the low frequencies from their reverbs, which is a good idea. There really isn't much to get rid of. I mean, I'm not perfect at this. And for fun, let's do this. I'm going to copy my Thor, all my Thor stuff. I'm going to rename it to Piano. B Piano. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to click it. I'm going to delete it. It's going to say, delete device. Do you want to delete this device? Yes, I do. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to instruments. And I'm going to grab a NNXT advanced sampler. I'm going to hit this folder, which will jump you to somewhere I'll go to factory sounds NNXT and then grab one of these basic pianos they're alright they're not great they get the job done so what I can do here is this this clip here is already here but if it's not you went, di went and did it a different way if you want to copy a clip Click it, drag it, press control, let go of the click, and then it'll do that. But we don't have to do that. I'm going to click these, and I'm going to go to position. There's this equal sign, and they'll all get the same. They'll go to the first known position that's on there or whatever, whatever is displayed there. I'm going to grab that, and now we have chords. And this should already be routed to the ducking, so this will also be ducked by the bass drum. Now somewhere in here, our chain isn't going, so we found it right there where we don't have the piano getting sent to our combinator, which means that no sound's gonna happen. Now we should have sound from the piano. So that's basically it. If you want more questions or want me to redo this video, because I know it's probably not the absolute best. It's my first attempt at doing this. But I thought I'd get it done rather than not get it done. So I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, learned something. If I went too fast on something, just let me know and I'll probably do more specific videos if you want me to or redo this one doesn't matter uh, if I can help you I will try to like comment subscribe to YouTube check out all my other videos I released an album and and then uh, yeah